So we've practiced combining like terms. And before we go any further into chapter 6 and 7, which are dealing with polynomials, we need to have a couple definitions. First of all, what is a polynomial? A polynomial is any function of the form f of x equals a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 plus times x to the n minus 1 plus da 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 plus a 0. Okay? Now it looks really complicated. However, all this is is the math person's way of saying, look, you've got a number times x to a power plus another number times x to another power and so on. But the powers have to be whole number powers. And you've seen these already. For example, this problem right here. So there's like a sub 3 x to the 3, a sub 2 x to the 2, and so on. It's saying that you have a string of variables raised to whole number power terms, right? Only one variable raised to varying powers, 3, 2, 1, 0. This is the 0 power, this is the 1 power, this is the 2 power, and so on. And then all it has is a whole bunch of coefficients in front of each one of them. The leading coefficient, of course, being the one in front of the term with the highest power. Now, what we really care about is a quadratic. A quadratic is where we're going to be spending the bulk of our time in chapter 6 and 7. So a quadratic is a polynomial function which can be put into the form f of x equals a x squared plus b x plus c. Okay, so, oh, and a can't be 0. So why can't a be 0? Well, if a was 0, what would happen? 0 times x squared would mean this whole term is 0, and that means it's gone. And then you have a linear function, which is also a polynomial, but it's not a quadratic, right? So a quadratic has to have that second degree term. More, what's more, it can't have anything higher than a second degree term, because if it did, then it would no longer be a quadratic. So a quadratic is a polynomial of degree 2. All right, so this form is called standard form. It's a polynomial of degree, I just said it, 2. All right, so now we're going to fill in the table of the graph of f of x by hand. Now, you can do this in your head a little bit like 0 squared, 0 squared would be 0, 1 squared would be 1, 2 squared would be 4, 3 squared would be 8, 4 squared is 16. Everybody knows their times tables. Now remember, for the negative ones, it's the same idea, right? Because if you want negative 1, oopsie, negative 1 squared, that's 1, right? When you square a negative, it turns it positive. Agreed? Okay, so this would be 1, this would be 4, because negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Just making these bold. Negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So all of these turn positive. Now you're going to plot those points on the grid and then graph them. So go ahead and pause me and plot the points. Poof, I plotted them as well and there they are. Right? Okay, now there should be little arrows up here at the top but I can't do that with the program that I'm graphing on. But technically, this parabola keeps going and going and going forever and ever and ever. And if you ever want to get some more points out of it, what you can do is you can go to y equals on your calculator, type x squared. I particularly like the x squared button down here. So I press the button x, and then I press the squared button. Um, or you could do x caret, that's this little button right there, 2. All right. And then I could go to the table and get a whole bunch of points out of it, right? See, negative 3 goes to 9, negative 4 goes to 16, and so on. And then I'm going to do just kind of a regular window so we can see it. If you want a window that matches the one that we had, you'd have to go to Window and type, oh, what were they? Hold on, i got to go back. Negative 6 to 6 and negative 6 to 18. So I could go negative 6, enter 6, enter, and then, um, let's see, this was negative 6, enter, and 18. And then when I graph, it should match the picture that we had. If you're fortunate enough to have one of the newer calculators, the color one in particular, the TID3C, which is, or 84C, which is what I'm working off of, then you can go to Format, go down to Grid, line and go enter on grid line and you can pick whatever color you want but I particularly like the medium gray and then I graph it and then it matches exactly like what we have on the paper. So um, the older calculators have the grid lines as well but it doesn't look as good. Um, the newer calculators, the color calculators, the 84C does a really good job of making those grid lines. Alright, so there's the graph. 
I think we have to do it again for another problem down here. So we're going to graph a cubic function. Now a cubic function is one that has x cubed as the highest power. So that would be a polynomial of degree 3, right? Because you're cubing. Again, a can't be 0 because if a was 0, then that term would disappear and then it would turn into a quadratic. So now we're going to fill in this table. And it says by hand, but I can practice with the calculator as well. So let me go here, clear. Now here you're going to have to use the caret button. x caret 3. Beautiful. Then I go to the table and I can get the numbers, which honestly we should know off the top of our head anyway, but this way we can just kind of double check ourselves. All right, so let me go type those numbers in. So this was negative 27, this was negative 8, oopsie, negative 1, 0, 1, 8, 27. Okay, there they all are. Now you're going to go plot those points and graph them. Sorry. There we go. All right, so pause me and go graph them. There they are. Beautiful. Got them all in there. I can't quite fit it on screen. It's just a tiny bit too big. <laughs> there we go. So I've got them all in there. And again, if you want to go to the calculator, um, if I want that window to match, here, let me see what my window was real quick. All right, so it was negative 4 to enter to 4 enter for my axis, negative 4 to 4, and then negative 28 to ne um, positive 28. So enter and then negative 28 for my y min and positive 28 for my y max. And then it looks like I actually have the grids on every two, so I'm going to do y scale of two. That way the grid lines will come across every two marks. And there we go. Yeah, I'll let you see the big screen. There. So you can see it's doing two, four, six, eight for the grid lines. Beautiful. Got that graphed. Next. All right, so now we've got two functions, f of x and g of x, and we're going to find the following and simplify. Okay, so we're going to start with f of 4. f of 4 would be equal to, now the function was 3x minus 4, so it's going to be 3 times 4 take away 4. That would be 12 take away 4, which is 8. Done. That's just kind of a review question. We've already had that question back in chapter 1, I believe. No, chapter 2. Chapter 2. All right, so now we're going to do it again, but with g. So g of negative 2, that would be equal to where there was an x, we're going to put in a negative. So negative 2 squared minus negative 2 minus 5. And for the love of goodness, when you're doing substitution with a negative number, be sure to use parentheses because otherwise you will not do it correctly. I promise. All right, so this is 4 because negative 2 squared is 4 plus 2 because minus and minus 2 is plus 2 minus 5. And so that would be equal to 1. Done with that. All right, so those two are review, good to, good to have, but now we got to hit some other stuff. So we're going to take f of x plus g of x. All right, so f plus g of x, that's equal to f of x plus g of x. Okay, so now what was f of x? All right, so that was 3x minus 4. There's f of x. I'm going to add to it g of x, x squared minus x minus 5. Now we've got all that typed up. All right, so let's see here. Well, this is again, I put the parentheses around it so you could see the two functions. There's f of x, there's g of x, and I'm adding the two of them because that's what I'm supposed to be doing. But the parentheses I don't really need. They're kind of a fake out. So it's 3x plus, minus 4 plus x squared minus x minus 5. Okay, that would be x squared. That's the only x squared term there is. Now I'm going to combine like terms here for the 3x and the minus x, so that makes plus 2x minus 9 because the 4 and the minus 5 combine. Matter of fact, let me underline those. Hold on. Poof. There we go. All right, so the 3x and the x I double underline because they're like terms, and then the minus 4 and the minus 5 I single underline because they're like terms. They go together. 
And there we go. So there's f plus g of x. Done with that. All right, now for d, it's the same kind of idea, but it's going to be a subtraction. So hold on. Let me actually, I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to copy and paste. So it won't be perfect. Hold on one second. All right, I know there's a couple ways to do this, but I want us to practice with subtraction. So I'm going to put a subtraction sign in here because those are the ones students usually have a harder time with. All right, so now the parentheses actually kind of do matter because what I want to see is that I have to distribute this negative to all of these in here. Let me make a note. Distribute negative. Okay, so that's minus x squared plus x plus 5. And then let's combine some like terms. So that's negative x squared. The 3x and the x make 4x and then minus, or plus 1, because minus 4 plus 5 is plus 1. So there's f of x, or f of x minus g of x. There we go. I can say that. Okay, but that wasn't what we were really looking for. What we want is f minus g of 1. So let me find f minus g of 1. That would be negative 1 squared. I think it was 1. I better double check that before I do this whole problem. Yep, it's 1. Okay, so let me go back. Um, let's see, plus 4 times 1 plus 1. That would be equal to uh, negative 1, because 1 squared is 1, so negative 1 plus 4 plus 1. And that's 4. Done. So that wasn't the only way we could do that problem, but I think it's for the best for us to practice it with our subtractions, because those are harder. Speaking of subtraction, let's look at this problem. So we have the revenue and costs, both in millions of dollars for Southwest Airlines at T years since 2000, can be modeled by these two functions. So we're going to find an equation for R minus C by hand. Now, revenue is money coming in. Take a, if you ever take a business class or accounting class, you'll find that out. So revenue is money you make. Costs are the money you spend. When you take the difference, what you're really finding is um, here. R minus C is equal to profit. Okay. Just a little note to yourself. Okay, so now I need to take these two functions and subtract them. So I'm going to take r of t take away c of t. Let me type those in. Poof, there they are. Okay, so r minus c of t, that's r of t minus c of t. So I take the revenue function and take away the, the cost function. So this is going to mean I'm going to do 183t squared minus 581t plus 5964. And I'm going to subtract 102t squared plus 100t, because you got to distribute that negative, minus 48977. Okay, so this is 81t squared minus 471t plus, oh, i got to go find that. Hold on. Oops, let me bring up the calculator. All right, so what was that number again? 5964, take away 4897, enter 1067. Okay, so plus 1067. There's your function. Oops. There it is. Beautiful. Okay, so now they want us to find r minus c of 10. So we're going to take 10 and plug it into that function that we just found. Oops. All right, so perfect. There's the function. So instead of t, I'm going to put 10 in parentheses. Parentheses is just a smart way to substitute. All right, so we're going to make the calculator do this. So let me bring up that calculator. Oops. Here. It's right here. So I want 81 times 10 squared and then minus 471 times 10 plus 1067. Enter. 4457. Which should go right there. 4457. Now the question is what does it mean? Let me type that up. Hold on one sec. That means that the model predicts that Southwest Airlines has a profit margin, because revenue minus cost is profit, of about four, four, five, seven million dollars in 2010. 